Now, what would Earth look like if it was the only planet in the solar system? Or, what would happen to our planet if the moon went missing? Or, what if dinosaurs had never gone extinct? We've all heard the story. Over 66 million years ago, a big asteroid hit Earth. Almost 75% of creatures that roamed the planet at the time were wiped out in mass extinction. Among them, dinosaurs. Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops, Velociraptor, all gone. But because of that, we're all alive. According to science, the human race was developing more safely without these gigantic creatures hunting us. But what if that asteroid had crashed to the ground a few miles away from the place where it fell? What would the world be like today? Imagine walking down the street to your local supermarket and coming across a truck-sized T-Rex. Could that ever happen in this alternate universe we're talking about? Well, dinosaurs would have had to survive a lot more than an asteroid to be living nowadays. About 55 million years ago, the temperatures on the planet rose. The climate became 14 degrees Fahrenheit hotter than it is today. Rainforests flourished, and vegetation was abundant. In this scenario, herbivore dinosaurs would have likely thrived. But they would have started to look a bit different. Plants started growing during that time period were not very rich in nutrients. This means that dinosaurs would have probably shrunk in size, not having the necessary energy to grow all the way to their full size. Then, about 34 million years ago, South America and Antarctica split, which resulted in a cooler and drier climate. During this period, long-legged dinosaurs would have been the ones to survive. At that time, animals had to travel long distances to hunt, since seasons started to affect the availability of food and water. Compared to the mammals of that period, dinosaurs would have had significant advantages, like having more teeth or better eyesight. And speaking of mammals, some of them probably would have never evolved. That would have become dinosaurs' breakfast first. By the way, did you know that some dinosaurs live among us today? Think pigeons, or birds in general. They've all evolved from dinosaurs. Now I bet you've heard once or twice that we use 10% of our brains. If this was true, what would happen if you used 100% of our brain? Would you be able to compose a symphony? Would you become a tech genius and create a multi-million dollar company overnight? Let's start with the facts. We don't only use 10% of our brain. This notion became highly popularized by movies, but it's not very accurate. The truth is, the largest portion of your brain is active at all times. But not all parts are working simultaneously. The exact percentage varies from person to person. Now, neurologists say you wouldn't be using 100% of your brain's capacity at once. Your body simply wouldn't have enough energy for that, which means you'd be hungry all the time. Imagine the number of calories you'd need to consume for that to work. You would also be limited by your body's basic needs, breathing, digesting food, and circulating blood. So if you did use all of the capacity of your brain, you'd be tired all the time. It'd be worse than running a marathon without any preparation. The brain would need all the blood you'd have, which would mean less oxygen for your lungs. Different organs would begin to shut down one by one. In a nutshell, it'd be terrible for your health. By the way, some researchers have estimated that more than 60% of the brain is composed of something that is called neural dark matter. In other words, this dark matter consists of neurons that have no apparent purpose or simply don't respond to common stimuli. Marathons are some of the greatest feats of strength and endurance in the world. But what would happen to your body if you decided to run a marathon without any training? The statistics are overwhelming. Nearly 50% of participants drop out of the race before crossing the finish line. A regular marathon is 26 miles long. And if you're not used to physical activity, it's a great challenge. You'd probably be able to run the first mile without any serious problems, but breathing loudly and heavily through your mouth. By the third mile, your body temperature would skyrocket, and you'd feel as if you have a mild fever. You'd most likely give up here, but if you decided to keep going, you'd have to trick your mind and body into running another 23 miles. By the 20th mile, you'd hit what is known as the wall. 
your body would have burned all your reserves of glucose and you'd get extremely tired. Even experienced runners often go through this stage. By the end of the marathon, you'd be promising yourself to never do this again. You'd leave the race with at least a few cramps and many food cravings. Now picture this, it's a clear, beautiful night. There are no clouds and you can see two of the brightest planets in Earth's sky blinking up there. Those are Mars and Venus. Now have you ever imagined what would happen if Earth was the only planet in the solar system? If the other planets never existed, things would be really different for our Earth. The planets in the solar system work together, keeping one another in certain place with their gravitational pull. Now, if Mercury or Venus ceased to exist, Earth would drift closer to the Sun. Our atmospheric temperature would become similar to that on the surface of Mercury. 800 degrees Fahrenheit. This would make life on Earth impossible. But if Jupiter or Saturn disappeared, Earth would most likely drift further away from the Sun, and its temperature would drop to below negative 200 degrees Fahrenheit. If life managed to survive in such circumstances, it would probably be aquatic. The position of Earth in the solar system not only affects all kinds of life forms, but it also dictates seasons, the length of days, and how long one year lasts. Now, when we say no other planets, we mean no moons either. So, what would happen if one fine day, the moon just disappeared? That would have catastrophic consequences. The moon has the largest influence on Earth's tides. In a moonless universe, tides would shrink by about 75%. This would greatly affect crabs, mussels, and sea snails that live in tidal zones. This would consequently disrupt the diet of larger animals. Eventually, it would affect entire coastal ecosystems. Earth's weather would change. Tides and tidal currents help mix cold Arctic water with warmer water from the tropics, stabilizing the climate worldwide. Weather forecasting would become almost impossible, and the average difference between the hottest and coldest places on Earth would become extreme. The absence of the moon would also influence Earth's tilt. Right now, Earth tilts on its axis at 23.5 degrees, mostly due to the moon's gravity. With no moon around, Earth's axis would wobble between 10 to 45 degrees. Scientists believe that even a slight difference in Earth tilt can cause huge changes, such as an ice age. Other than this, a moonless sky would upend the lives of many nocturnal animals. Moths have evolved to navigate using the light of the moon and stars. Newborn baby turtles use the moon's light to find their way to the ocean. Different animals rely on both darkness and a small amount of moonlight to hunt effectively. Now how about we travel far back in time and imagine what would happen if you lived in ancient Egypt. This civilization lasted for over 3,000 years. Ancient Egyptians were responsible for building some of the world's most recognizable symbols, the Great Pyramids at Giza. If you'd lived in ancient Egypt, you'd have witnessed a time of enormous scientific and mathematical breakthroughs. Ancient Egyptians organized themselves in strict social structures, so you'd probably have to fit into one of them. You'd have either been born a laborer, a farmer, or a specialist, which was either a soldier, a sailor, or a teacher. Or you'd have been part of the Egyptian elite. If you had been a farmer, you'd probably live in a house made of mud bricks. You'd have had a stone oven and kept your food stored in a pit in the ground. You'd have spent your days tending to crop fields by the Nile River, or taking care of cattle and ducks. On tax days, you'd have packed up some of your harvest and brought it to the temple as payment for the usage of land. If you'd been a member of the elite, you'd have spent most of your days in banquets. You would have adorned yourself in gold and semi-precious stones, displaying all your wealth. If you had lived in ancient Egypt, maybe you would have been one of those who invented tables. Yep, before the Egyptians, there was no such thing as a table. This invention appeared as a way to keep food off the ground. The large ball of fire thousands of miles away from us is the brightest object in our solar system, as well as the biggest. If Jupiter was the size of a basketball, then the Earth would look like a tiny little grape. But the Sun makes even Jupiter look like a joke. That big burning ball in the sky is made up of hydrogen and helium. 
and is 864,000 miles in diameter, making it more than 100 times wider than our little blue planet. It's 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit just on the surface and 27 million degrees at the core. The moon, on the other hand, is a little easier to grasp at at around 2,160 miles in diameter, which is only less than a third of Earth. It might seem pretty big floating in the sky, but that's because it's the closest object to us. But what if the tables, or in this case, celestial bodies, have turned, and the moon suddenly became brighter than the sun? Let's explore several scenarios. Scenario 1. If the moon becomes brighter than the sun, the nights will be brighter than days. It means your sleep cycle will be disrupted. All nocturnal animals will be utterly confused. When is it time to go out and eat now? In the extreme north and south poles, the nights and days are for months on end. So people living in the area already have an idea of what it's like to sleep at 11 p.m. with the sun shining brightly above them. For the rest of us, it won't be easy. Let's say you're out camping and prepare an awesome meal and gear up for the dark nights. As you trek into the forest, you find a spot that has an awesome view of the lake and the clear sky above. It's 7 p.m. and you start a fire for some s'mores and get the telescope ready. The only problem is that when the sun begins to set, the moon lights up the sky even brighter. It's surprisingly not as hot as you'd imagine since it's not direct sunlight, but regardless, it's still pretty hot. Scenario 2. Temperatures will surely rise either way. That means snow will melt away faster than you can go. What? What's going on? The snow on the mountains will be the first to melt, followed by the polar caps. With so much heat, the sea levels will rise and take small remote islands scattered across the ocean underwater. Coastal towns will go down and everyone will live closer inward. This will likely cause a chain reaction in the world economy. There will be no more winters, which means no more winter activities like skiing, snowboarding, or snow fights. Animals and plants all around the world will be affected. The world will turn into a large desert. Water will get scarce over the years, but people will find a way to preserve it. Scenario 3. You're sitting behind your desk, bored. You're losing business. People aren't buying as many sunglasses as you thought. But when the moon suddenly becomes brighter than the sun, and everyone needs to wear those glasses 24-7 when heading outside. You can't keep up with the demand for sunglasses, so you hire more people and grow your business. You eventually become the best sunglasses business in the country. They don't recommend looking up at the sky at any point of the day or night. Cities are covered with large visors to reduce the brightness every day. Sunglasses will come in different sizes and shapes for different times of the day. Some will be like goggles strapped around your head, while others will be like large helmets. Scenario 4. The moon's atmosphere is so thin that it can't contain anything in it. Just like over deserts on Earth, there are no clouds to bring some rain, which is why it's always hot or cold. Yeah, the biggest desert in the world is the whole continent of Antarctica, which is a cold, barren desert. Contrary to what people think of the Sahara Desert, so, if you still want to land on the moon, you better think twice now. People who are working at the International Space Station will have to find a new office. The moon will be too bright to bear, considering how close they are. If the moon is just brighter than the sun without the heat part, then the space station will only require adjustments to keep the light out. The reason why we see the moon in various shapes is because of its position in relation to the sun. The moon doesn't rotate, unlike Earth. It's kind of glued to us and is always showing the same side. So, depending on the moon's position during the month, we'll have a super bright night during the full moon and relatively shiny nights during the rest of the month. Scenario 5. If the moon became brighter than the sun, it would produce more heat than the sun and probably become larger. Gravity on Earth would change significantly because of the moon's new size. The whole orbit structure would change and affect the celestial objects floating in space. Planets would soon begin to orbit around the moon. Earth might move further away from the sun. If that happened, then everything would have to readjust to the radical changes in gravity. Weak gravity means buildings wouldn't have a solid foundation to sit on and would eventually collapse. Bridges and large monuments would also fail to hold up. People wouldn't be able to walk properly and would do it in a funny way. 
Scenario 6. In many of these scenarios, I mentioned how the moon would be brighter than the object emitting light, but in this case, the sun would have to come from the moon reflecting from the sun, which means that the sun would have to be twice as bright as it is now. If the sun got 100 times bigger, it would shoot out more rays, which can be damaging and throw off a lot of radiation, harmful to every living thing on Earth. The gravitational pull of the Sun might attract more planets to orbit around it and cause other objects in space to join the orbit. The planets would be partying in our galaxy club, and we might be thrown off our orbit course. Of course, this would pose a bigger risk to everything on Earth as things would get hotter and drier than before. Scenario 7. If we're talking about the Moon getting brighter, we can also assume it would get closer to Earth than it is now. The brightness won't be the problem here, as gravity will cause major changes on Earth. But every day, 24-7 will be high tide. It will be so extreme that there will be constant floods in every coastal town. All islands will be submerged, which will increase the population of inland cities. Marine life will be having the time of its life when water overtakes the land. Boats will have to be re-engineered for new conditions as well as submarines. Air travel will be the priority but large cruise ships will look futuristic and have an extra build to sustain the harsh waves. Nighttime will be pretty bright on regular days. It will raise the global temperature, which will melt down the snow, causing the sea levels to increase even more. Comets and other celestial objects will be drawn to a closer gravitational pull, so we will always have to look up whenever we go outside. But no worries, the moon is still up there as it is for a very long time. The Earth and the Moon's relationship is complicated. Luckily, we only have one natural satellite. Other planets in our solar system have multiple moons revolving around them. Some are so huge that they're the size of Earth. Imagine several of those affecting our home. But that's a topic for a completely different story. The Moon has long been believed to have formed as a result of a humongous impact with the Earth. A Mars-sized celestial body could have driven itself into our planet and made part of its crust shatter. The resulting debris then packed together in a tight ball, which later became our Moon. But there's one question that's been bugging scientists. The Earth's crust is poor in metals, so how come the Moon has so much metal within it? The latest research basically throws the main theory out the window. So we again know nothing about our closest neighbors coming to existence. On the moon, iron is preserved in pristine condition because there's no oxygen. It simply can't rust there. But a couple of years ago, scientists made an unexpected discovery. In the higher regions of our satellite, iron is oxidized and actually rusting. At first, this finding perplexed astronomers to no end. The presence of rust might mean people can breathe, at least in certain areas of the Moon. But then the explanation surfaced. Oxygen might have got to the lifeless rock from our own planet. In the absence of atmosphere, solar winds beat the Moon relentlessly, and nothing can stop them. These flares could swoop some oxygen from the upper layers of the Earth's atmosphere and carry it all the way to the Moon. The molecules then come to rest at the highest points of the Moon's surface. That would explain why metals don't get oxidized in the ravines, and especially under the surface of the satellite. Water on Earth is actually a puzzle shrouded in mystery and covered with riddles. The most popular theory is that it was brought to our planet by icy comets and asteroids that left behind not only mighty craters, but the liquid substance, thanks to which we can now thrive. But there's a new advance which suggests another scenario. In space, there's a whole lot of organic matter, and under specific conditions, it could yield so much water, it would be enough to fill our oceans a thousand times over. Researchers conducted an experiment in which they heated this organic matter and obtained clear water and oil. If this is confirmed in future studies, it could mean that even oil appeared on Earth, not only thanks to fossilized remains of living beings, but came from outer space as well. The climate changes we're witnessing are most probably part of a natural cycle. Researchers from the University of California, Santa Cruz, have devised a pattern in our planet's climate variations, and they look like extremely long seasons. Sometimes, these states could last for millions of years, 
and they're all related to how the Earth is positioned relative to the sun. The seasons were dubbed ice house, cool house, warm house, and hot house, according to the prevalent temperatures. For the past three million years, for example, our planet has been in the state of ice house, since the last ice age was not so long ago. But humanity's actions, adding to the greenhouse effect, have pushed the climate state to warm house much faster than it would have come without us. When it finally comes, the overall temperature on Earth will rise to tropical values, something that the planet hasn't seen in over 50 million years. <laughs> what a time to be alive! Back to the moon now. You can see it at different places, in different sizes, and even in different colors every night. The size and location are pretty easy to explain. As the Earth rotates around its axis and revolves around the sun, we see the moon traveling around the night sky and getting either closer to or farther from our planet. What makes it bright yellow tonight and ominously dark red tomorrow is a more complex thing. The natural color of the moon as seen from outside the Earth's atmosphere is brownish gray. From the surface of our planet though, it may vary a lot. When seen right above our heads, it usually looks bright and almost white because its reflected light passes through a relatively thin layer of the atmosphere. Almost nothing blocks and refracts the shine, so it's very clear. The moon can appear yellow, orange, or even red when it's seen just above the horizon. The effect is similar to what happens at sunrise or sunset when the sun appears to be red. The light goes a much longer way to reach your eyes from that location and much of the blue part of its spectrum gets lost. This turns the color of the light into a much warmer variety. Our natural satellite can also appear blue, and the reason for that is the presence of fine particles in the air. They refract the light anyway, so the moon is actually never the way it looks outside the atmosphere. But when they're larger than usual, they turn its color bluish. Finally, there's an extremely rare occasion where the moon can look purple. Nobody actually knows for sure why this happens, but astronomers believe it must be a combination of the atmosphere, dust particles, and maybe something else. There's no clear explanation. Moon quakes aren't something from science fiction. They don't occur as often as on our planet. And when they do, it happens closer to the center of the satellite. Scientists think moon quakes might be caused by the gravity of Earth and the Sun. There are Mars quakes too. For a long time, the red planet had been considered tectonically inactive, but more recent observations have shown it still has weak quakes from time to time. You probably wouldn't even be able to feel them if you stood on Mars's surface, but it means some geological processes are still going on underneath the red and dusty landscape. There's no dark side to the moon. Our satellite is tidally locked with Earth, meaning it's always turned to us with one side while the other always looks away. The sun is much farther from us than the moon, and we're both turning round and round, warming and lighting this side and that in turn. It means that once in every short while, the moon is lit by the sun from either side. It's just that we can't see it from where we are. Each year, the moon is moving away from Earth because of the interaction between the moon's gravitational force and our oceans. It moves around 1.5 inches away each year, which means in 600 million years, it will be 14,600 miles further from Earth than it is now. The number isn't accidental. That's the time when total solar eclipses will stop happening. There is water on the moon. Not puddles or lakes, but grains of water ice exist in permanently shadowed parts near the moon's poles. Scientists think water got on the moon a long time ago, during a period when both the Moon and Earth were constantly struck by asteroids and comets. Those contain water ice. This process may have even helped us get our own lakes and oceans, not just the Moon's icy water. Newer research says the Moon's interior already had water, and it went to the surface during volcanic activity. The same might have happened on our planet, too. For those of you who think the Earth only has one Moon, there are two more asteroids locked into co-orbital orbits with our planet. The first one doesn't really circle around the Earth, but has some sort of a synchronized orbit with the planet. That's why it looks like it's following the Earth in a stable orbit, while in reality, it has its own specific path around the Sun. The other one follows a horseshoe orbit around our planet. 
Its specific path brings this asteroid closer to us every 95 years. The Moon has its own time zone, called Lunar Standard Time. Time is different on the Moon, so a year there is divided into 12 days, considering each is as long as our month. Days got names after astronauts who walked on the Moon. The Moon calendar starts the moment Neil Armstrong stepped onto the Moon in 1969. The crust of the Moon is not equally thick in all its parts. The average thickness is about 31 miles, but there are much thinner and much thicker areas. This is sometimes due to craters found all across its surface, and there are also big hollow tubes underneath. A lunar orbiter found one such tube several years ago, and it's pretty enormous. Although the tube's shape is irregular, it could swallow an entire football field. Scientists are still unsure what they could find in its depths. It could be a tunnel system, or some geological wonder in there. The most popular explanation of this thing is that it's a lava tube, the likes of which can be found on Earth too. When a lava flow cools, it gets a hard crust, which later thickens and creates a roof over that same lava. It continues to flow, but when it stops, the channel can drain, which results in an empty tube. 